Shalom Aleichem everyone, hope everyone's doing well. Bezat Hashem, today we'll be starting towards uh, the top of Chaf Aleph Amud Aleph at the new Mishnah with a new discussion in the same line of what we've been discussing about the unique laws that are applicable to a king. We're going to have one section in today's learning which is the debate regarding how many wives a king is allowed to have. Bezat Hashem, our learning should be a zechut, a merit for the refuah shleima, the speedy, quick, and complete recovery of Yaakov ben Dina, and we should hear only besarot tovot. Now before we see this inside, Chafalaf Moral at the Mishnah, it's important to see that there is a section in the Torah in Parashat Shoftim that talks about unique laws that apply to the king. And the, the Torah here says, it's Parashat Shofti in Perak Yed Zayin, and it begins uh, Pasuk Tet Zayin, actually. So it says three unique rules of limitation that apply to the king. It says, Rak, it's Pasuk Tet Zayin. Rak lo yarbel lo susim. First it says the king is not allowed to increase too many horses. And the, the Pasuk says because this may lead him to go back to Mitzrayim because that's where they have the most choicest horses. That we'll discuss actually in the next Mishnah, Bezat Hashem. And the next Pasuk Yitzayin says, Velo yarbelo nashim. He should not have too many wives. And the Pasuk gives a reason. Velo yasur levavo, because it should not cause his heart to go astray. Be turned away from Hashem. And then the same Pasuk says, Vechesed v'zahav lo yarbelo ma'od. He shouldn't have too much money. So it says these three limitations that need to be put. Now specifically in regards to he shouldn't have too many wives. So it shouldn't cause his heart to go astray. So the Mishnah picks up here and tells us what is considered yarbe, what's considered too many. And we'll have a machloket regarding this as well. So says the Mishnah. Lo yarbelo nashim. About five lines down. He should not, the Pasuk says, he shall not have too many wives regarding the king. So the Mishnah says he can only have up to 18. Rabbi Yudah and Rabbi Yudah says, and we'll see in the Gemara what the source for this number is, but that's, he can't have more than 18. Rabbi Yudah, Rabbi Yudah says, Mar behulo. No, he could have more than 18. Ah, it says, Lo yar belo. So the Gemara, Mish Rabbi Yudah explains, Uvilvad shelo yeyu misirot et libo. As long as they don't turn him away from Hashem, the wives don't turn him away from the Torah. So meaning to say, Rabbi Yudah interprets the verse, Lo yar belo nashim velo yisr yisr levavo. He can't have more than 18 wives if they will turn his heart away from the Torah, which would mean that if they're righteous wives, he could have more than 18 wives. So it's only a limitation if his wives are uh, wicked. But if they're righteous, he could have more than 18 wives because they will not turn him away from Hashem and away from the Torah. That's Rabbi Huda's pshat. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Rabbi Shimon argues, he says, Afilu achat mesirat libo, even if it's just one wife, and she's wicked, so she causes the king to turn away from the Torah. He wouldn't be allowed to marry her. So if so, why does the Torah say not to increase in wives, which implies you're not allowed to have certain, more than a certain number, 18. So Rabbi Shimon argues, and he says, the limitation is, even if the women are righteous, he can't have more than 18. Meaning even if, if they're wicked, he can't even marry one like that. Lo yasur levavo means he can't even marry one woman that is going to turn him away from the Torah because she's wicked. So the chidush of the pasuk of lo belo nashim is even if they're righteous, he cannot have more than 18, even if they're righteous. Now, there is discussion here in the Rishonim. Is there, are there three shitot in the Mishnah or are there two shitot in the Mishnah? Because we open up with a statement that lo yarbelo nashim means he can't have more than 18. Is that a standalone opinion of the Tanakhama and Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon follow? Or is there two shitot? Everybody agrees lo yarbelo nashim can't have more than 18. They're just qualifying what types of wives can you not have more than 18. Let's go with the second approach because it seems like a logical way to read the Mishnah. And let's just speak that out, how it would come out now. It would come out that both agree you can't have more than 18. That's what the Pasuk is teaching us. The question is, what type of woman is he not allowed to have more than 18? According to Rabbi Yehuda, he can't have more than 18 if they're wicked. It means to have more than 18 wicked women. And according to Rabbi Shimon, you can't even have one wicked woman as a, as a king. So it means you can't have more than 18. It means if, even if they're righteous, he can't have more than 18. Two different ways of understanding 
the Pasuk. Says the Gemara, Lememra, this would imply, and this is a fascinating sugya we're about to discuss here. And let me just speak it out and we'll see it inside. There is a shita which we're about to show, Rabbi Shimon holds elsewhere, that we're Doresh Ta'ama Dekra, that we expound the reasonings of the Psukim. Now, what does that mean? It means if you have a Pasuk and there is a potential way to understand the reason for the Mitzvah, the reason for the Pasuk, that reason will now allow us to qualify the mitzvah, to un- interpret the mitzvah in a certain angle. This is a little bit of a dangerous territory because uh, we can take this too far. But Rabbi Shimon holds we are Doresh Ta'ama Dikra. We do expound the reasoning of the Pasuk. Now, let me just illustrate the example that we're about to bring and then we'll see why this seems to contradict their opinions in our Mishnah. The Pasuk in Parashat uh, Kitetse. So it says the following. The Pasuk says regarding taking a collateral, right? So a person lends money and he wants to take something to hold on to as a collateral to pressure the borrower into paying back. So the Pasuk says, we know, elsewhere we know, is that the halacha is, if you take a collateral, that's let's say pajamas, for example, something used at night, so you have to return it. If it's a poor person, that's all he has, you return it to him at night so he can use his pajamas for sleeping. Okay, and then you take it back during the day. But the Pasuk says, it's Parashat Ki Tetze. Perek Haftalid, Pasuk Yed Zayin. It says, Lo tate mishpat ger yatom. Do not cause the judgment of a ger, a, a, or a convert, or an orphan to be perverted. Velo tachabol beged almana. And don't take as a collateral the garment of a almana, of a widow. Now, Rabbi Shimon holds that we're Dorish time of the crop. So he expound the reason for this idea. And he explains as follows. The problem could be that if you take a collateral from a widow, so you're gonna come and give it back to her at night and collect it again in the morning, you're gonna constantly be going to the house of a widow, neighbors are going to see, and this will cause a bad reputation. They're gonna think, look, there's this single woman, a widow, living by herself, and there's this man that frequently comes to her to be uh, in her house, it create a negative reputation. People will think she's sleeping around. So therefore, based on that, Rabbi Shimon says, but that now qualifies the verse. This would only be an issue if it's something you have to return, which means if it's a poor woman and you have to return this uh, pledge, these pajamas every night, so you're going to be constantly be near her, it will create that negative reputation. But says Rabbi Shimon, based on that, if it's a wealthy woman, you don't have to constantly return it. So you could take a Beged al mana. You could take a collateral from her because there's no reputation that will be damaged. So Rabbi Shimon limits the verse based on his understanding that we expound the reasoning which qualifies the halacha. Major, major chidush. Now Rabbi Yudah disagrees. Rabbi Yudah says, no, it's both a wealthy woman or a poor woman. We don't expound the reason. It says you can't take a collateral, a pledge from a, uh, a, a al mana. You can't take it, period. That's the bottom line. Says the Gemara, it would appear at face value that their shitot are in the reverse in our Mishnah. Because in our Mishnah, we're quoting from the Pasuk in Parashat Shoftim, when it talks about the king, it says he can't marry more than a certain amount of women, 18, let's say. And the Pasuk teaches us, why velo yasur levavo? Because it will turn, it will cause his heart to stray. So Rabbi Yehuda says that's only an issue if their women will cause his heart to stray, if they're wicked which seems to be he's expounding the halakha based on Doresh Tamid Dekra, the reasoning of the verse. But if they're righteous, he could marry more than 18. And Rabbi Shimon says the opposite. Rabbi Shimon says even if they're righteous, he can't marry more than 18, which seems to be not qualifying the verse with its reason. So it seems to be that their shitot about being Doresh or not Doresh Ta'ama Dekra, expounding the verse based on reasoning for the halakha, is contradicted between our Mishnah and that halacha about the Almana. Let's see that inside now. Lemeim, the Gemara says this would imply that Rabbi Yudha, Darish Ta'ama Dikra, that Rabbi Yudha expounds the reasoning of the verse because he says that she, the, the king can't have more than 18 if they're wicked because Velo Yasur Levavo, cause them to stray. Rabbi Shimon, Lo Darish Ta'ama Dikra, and Rabbi Shimon does not expound the reasoning of the verse. And he says across the board he can't marry more than 18 even if they're righteous. I, the problem is, but we find that they have the opposite shitot. Titania, as the Brayta teaches, 
Almana, when it says, <coughs> you can't take a pledge or a collateral from the widow. Buddha says, whether she's poor or she's rich, you can't take a collateral from her. It says, it says, you can't take a collateral from the widow. So it's across the board, regardless of reasoning. We don't give the reason. Rabbi does not Doresh Tam and Tikra. Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon argues, and he says, if she's wealthy, you could take a collateral from her. If she's poor, you cannot. Now his words are a little bit vague. We're going to have to clarify, but he says, "You will have to return it to her." And you'll cause a negative reputation amongst her neighbors. So the Gemara there in analyzing this opinion, what it says? What is Rabbi Shimon saying? This is what Rabbi Shimon is saying. Because you're going to take it as a collateral, you'll have to bring it back for her to use it when it's the time that she needs it. And you'll be going in and out of her house. And you'll cause there to be a negative reputation amongst her neighbors. So says the Gemara, Alma, what do we see? Rabbi Yehuda lo darish taima dekra. Rabbi Yehuda does not expound the reasoning of the verse. Rabbi Shimon darish taima dekra. And Rabbi Shimon is, he does expound the reasoning of the verse. So it appears to be, we have a contradiction. What is their underlying shita? If we use the reason of the verse to qualify the halacha or not, it's contradicted between our halacha of the king not marrying more than 18 wives and that halacha of not taking a collateral from a widow. So the Gemara answer is like this. The Alma, really in general, Rabbi Yehuda, lo darish time at the crow. Let's start with Rabbi Yehuda. Really, in general, as we find by the case of Almana, he does not expound the reasoning of the verse. And that's why he says across the board, even if she's wealthy, you can't take the collateral from the widow. Vishani hacha, but it's different over here by the king. Demifarish time at the crow, it specifies the reasoning of the verse. Meaning, we don't usually expound the reasoning of the Pasuk. But the Pasuk here lays out a reason for us. It says, don't marry more than a certain amount, 18 wives. It goes out of its way to say the reason. So matam. So what is it saying? What's the reason lo yar belo nashim that he can't marry more than a certain number of wives? Mishum de lo yasur levavo because they will cause his heart to stray. We don't want that to happen. So when the verse goes out of its way to say this is the reason, we use that reason to qualify the halacha where it doesn't say a reason. So we don't darish time in the Quran. Therefore, by the almana, you you can't take a. Uh, collateral from or across the board. There's no reason given. We can't make up our own reason to qualify the halacha. But regarding the king, it says the reason. So therefore, says Rabbi Yudah, if they're not wicked, he can marry more than 18 because they won't cause Yasur Levavo for his heart to stray. For Rabbi Shimon, Amar Lecha, Rabbi Shimon says the opposite. Michti, let's analyze this. In general, we would use our own logic to conclude what is the reason for the verse and use that reason to expound the halacha we're, we're trying to deduce without it saying in the verse. So in Cain Lichtov Kras, if so, the Torah could have just said regarding the king, lo yar belo nashim. It could have just said, don't have too many wives, vilishtok, and stop there, be quiet. Vana amina, I would have said, matam lo yar be, what's the reason he can't have more than 18 wives? Mishum de lo yasur, because they will cause him to stray. Since in general we expound the reason of the verse without it stating it explicitly, we would have known that's the reason. So the, therefore the Gemara says, Lo yasur lamali. Rabbi Shimon says, why does it need to specify the reason? So it must be, it's not telling us that's why you can't have too many wives. That's saying, Afilu achatu libo. Even if there's just one woman who turns his heart astray, meaning if she's wicked causing him to stray, from the Torah, that must be the Pshat and the Pasuk, says Rabbi Shimon. It, since it didn't need to state the reason, because we would naturally expound the reason, the fact that it does expl explicitly state the reason is not that you can't have too many wives because of that, but even one woman, says Rabbi Shimon, would be problematic for that reason if she was wicked. So Ella, so then Rabbi Shimon is left with Elamani Mikayim Lo Yarbes. And then what is the halacha of not increasing? That's not talking about wicked woman, because wicked woman we just said according to Rabbi Shimon would even be one. If you look at Abigail, the Chidush is, even if they're righteous, like Abigail, who is a Neviah, even like her, he wouldn't be allowed to marry beyond the number of 18. So that's how they understand differently. When it comes out, Rabbi Yehuda says, we're not going to expound the, the reasoning of the verse unless it specifically, explicitly states it, which is our case by the king. Rabbi, Rabbi Shimon says the opposite. We always expound the reason of the verse 
<clears throat> and it doesn't need to specifically state it. And now if it does, it must be teaching us something in addition to the simple reading, and that's how we expound the verse here, by the king differently than by the almana. And we're going to stop here. Hanish Monasrei Minalan, about halfway down, Chafal of Muralif. Ezrat Hashem will pick up tomorrow with the next step where we're going to show what's the source altogether that this number is 18. The number of wives is not allowed to marry more than. But in the meantime, we wish everybody a wonderful day and all the best.